On this episode, Jason Calcanis stops by. It's Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 233 of the Ask Gary V Show. Two of my favorite people are here, Jason Calcanis and India. India, why are you even here? This is amazing, I'm excited. I, I don't Elliot, know. are you sad? Show sad Elliot. <laughs> sad Elliot, I love it. India, very good to see you. But Jason, more importantly for the four people that don't know who you are, why don't you give them a 30 to 75 second bio? Uh, I'm a angel investor. I create media Is that what you start with? No, I started. Okay, I, I say I say yeah. things all the time. Yeah, exactly. No, I started Silicon Honor Reporter here in New York. So I started a bunch of internet companies, mainly in publishing. And I am an angel investor mm-hmm. and uh, commentator. I'm kind of like the West Coast version of Gary Vee. <laughs> I'm like the Knicks. You're the Jets. Yep. Your ambition hustling. is to buy the Knicks. Yeah, that's like seeing the ambition. garden. It's it's getting harder and harder. The value of these companies. I know. The TV deals. We're not being more successful than the value of these companies. Exactly. Going Jerry and I it's are getting worse. More successful. It's great, but not good. fast enough. Not, it's to the gap. Well, the good news for me with the NFL is that ultimately has a decline with concussions and this and yeah. that, and so we'll see. But anyway, so what's been going on? A lot of a lot of people. Uh, you know, it's funny. I have a lot of young young entrepreneurs, and a little bit more like not all just tech where yeah. you have enormous names. So I think for a lot of people, um, look, I think for, from my standpoint, from afar, and we've interacted a bunch, he's, he's, he just executes and hustles, I like that. Uh, very early web 1.0 kind of entrepreneur. Yeah, I started when the web was uh, no images, no video, the 90s here in New York. Yep. It was pretty exciting. We all knew it would get big, but. Um, it took it longer than we all thought. Right, because yeah, we were kids, right? It like did. by the year 2000, it felt like, you know, I remember Wine Library was gonna sell all of its wine on Wine Library by the year 2002. You know, this device that was, chart like was an wrong. unexpected game changer. Oh, game changer because we never expected you would have a supercomputer in your pocket with a broadband connection. Didn't we find the video on Wine Library TV where I'm like, you can use Twitter on your phone now? Yeah. We need to pull that up. Yeah, like, and like, it's not right. on SMS and there's apps. <laughs> it does not the iPhone right exist. Do you have it? Yeah, in my inbox. We just I was just looking so, at a, a tweet about Uber. When, when was it? When did I say, when was the video from? 2007? Uh, so 232. Uh, Which is, Library. whoa, and this is what, 233? Oh, we almost, that would have been great. That would have been an amazing recall. But things change fast, you know, like Super I was fast. looking at this. And Jason, you're one of the few guys in that angel ecosystem that I grew up with that was smart enough to invest in the angel round of Uber. Yeah, um, one of the things you learn about being an angel investor is you don't have to know if the company's gonna succeed, you just need to know if the person's gonna yeah, be successful. Travis the best. Yeah, Travis, yeah. And you just knew a Travis that he's indefatigable, <laughs> he's a hustler, he's hardworking. Yep. I mean, and I passed on Twitter and Zynga because I couldn't figure out the businesses. And that's when I was like, you know what? I I'm betting I can, on horses. Exactly, Evan mm-hmm. Williams mm-hmm. and Mark Pinkus are gonna win or whatever me. they do. That's you right, know? yep. You gotta just bet the person and the, their ability to figure it out. Talking so. about great people, let's go to India. India, let's uh, get into the first question. Oh, here we go. From Brian. Oh, video. Video from Brian. Oops. Rusty. Hey, what's up, Gary V? My name is Brian, aka Mind of Bun. I'm on the app Musically, and I have a following of over 600,000 people. Not only that, but I'm one of four Musically reps that live in New York City. So, my question is, I don't know what to do next. I feel like I'm stuck in a plateau. I don't know what to do next. I I love making these videos. Not only on Musically, but I'm also pushing everybody to YouTube too. I ask this question because I have friends who have less followers than me, who have managers and people who who I know that have millions of fans who don't don't even have managers or they don't even know what to do. So what should I do next with this following? Do I go out there and look for companies or brand deals or should I link up with a manager or what should I do? I put my business email out there and I'm not always getting emails every day or something. I, I am patient, I do wait. But lately, I'm just trying to figure out uh, a way to, to get a source of income from this. Because, again, I do love doing this. I love doing this. But at the end of the day, I still have my mom harassing me saying, hey, um, are you going to get a job or this and that? And, yeah, so, Gary, what should I do? So, Jason, it's fun to have you here with this question. Good job by you guys curating. Because, again, we lived 
through early bloggers getting famous. Sure. Then Twitter was really the first preview to this, sure. where both of us were lucky enough to be one of those 100, 150 people that everybody sure. was following. Um, what kind of advice do you give to, you know, there's, I'm paying a lot of attention to the Musical.ly stars. Sure. This is the youngest generation of stars we ever see. You're making a joke of VaynerMedia being young. We're talking about nine, 10, 11, 12 year old stars. Yeah. Like it's, in, it's Nickelodeon up in Musical.ly right now. What's your, what's your advice for this? Well, I mean, what is the goal here? Like, does the person want to be, do they actually have any raw talent? Are they actually a musician? Are they actually a singer? Um, or are they just kind of becoming popular for doing like Do you think that's comedy? becoming, do you think that's possibly becoming just talent in self? Like, you that's know, it's, it's interesting you said that and I'm debating it myself. Right, do you actually have a skill? So what I think is adding skills to your repertoire, like that can only help you. So if you learn an instrument, if you actually learn to sing, then you can kind of take it to the next level. So when you saw Justin Bieber on YouTube, it was like, yeah, he's a YouTube star, but he actually had a core talent. No, right? he was a real talent. He was a real talent. Then you look at somebody like uh, King uh, Batch yes. on Vine. Like, yes. He was the number one guy for a while, and it probably still is. Like he actually is funny. He can he's act. a real he, comedian. He's a real comedian. Actor. A- actor, yes. right, he's a comedic actor. Yes. So I think adding skills when you're a young person is one thing that this generation has got point. backwards. Like, they go get the fame and it's great. You can hit that lightning in a bottle, but get that skill. You can never, it can never be taken away from you. Yeah, I think, I think networking. I think just even asking this question, like for example, I'm interested. I'm spending more time in Musical.ly, so let's get this kid into my office. I want to meet him for 20 minutes. And you just need to do that over and over, right? Yeah. How many people have been able to get to you and met for 15 or 30 minutes just by pounding you on social and email yeah. through the last decade? Give me a rough estimate of number. Because I know over it's more than- it. Over a thousand, it takes you, time. But you, yeah. right, and some people, they email you one time and you give them 15 minutes, and some people email you 37,000 times and yeah. you never talk to them. Exactly. That's, that's the punchline. But line. I look at the quality. Like, I, I look for people with but skill, it's a, but that's But you know me. this, it's a subjective moment in time. Sure. Like, at that moment, it felt mm-hmm. like, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a crapshoot. Yeah, but you know what, it's a numbers game. If you, one of the things is, I had an invest, I have a portfolio company that raised money from seven people. And they're like, we can't raise any more money, it's not working. I'm like, well, how'd you get the first seven? They're like, well, we met with like a ton of people. I was like, how many people did you meet with? They said 15. I was like, so you can raise money from 50% of the people you meet with, and now you met with another five, you didn't get an investor, so you're quitting? Soft. Like, so soft. Soft. You gotta do at least 50 meetings, and what you do is you take notes after every meeting, and you ask people, candidly, why did you pass on investing? It, the way you could help me, I understand you're passing, is just, can you just tell me the truth? Be candid with me and tell me why I suck or tell me what it. I need to work on. You know Love what? It. People will do it if you give them permission to speak freely. Love it. India, let's move it forward. By the way, I'm serious. I want to meet the kid. Make it happen. Hey, Lou. Manu. Hey, Gary. It's a Canadian homie, Swish. Uh, I had a question for you. Very short and sweet. What's your career advice to D-Rock? and how he can progress his career because he's a madly talented person and I know for sure you want the best out of him. Man, a great question. Uh, for me, I think D-Rock needs to hold on to me for dear life because I think he's grossly overrated because of the fame and stardom of my amazing ability. And so if I was D-Rock, I'd be holding on for dear life. Is this one of your whack packers? No, that's D-Rock. That's so what I D-Rock, said, one of your whack So he, he <laughs> is, Obviously filming Dang. Daily V and yes. he's got clearly, he's got video skills and he's built it in an yeah. I mean now when we, I take How a long sel- has he been here? How long have you been here, D-Rock? Two and a half years. All right, let me tell you something about uh, loyalty. It's year three and four when the magic happens. Everybody wants to bounce years. after a year or two, go to the next thing, because yeah. somebody's gonna go, oh, D-Rock's associated with him, let me give him a 10% bump in salary, I'll jump over there. But I'm telling you. Or a hundred, when you're making two bucks whatever. an hour, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I always find that people who stick around for year three, four, or five in a startup, they kind of ascend to this level and they learn some stuff. And you want to learn when you're young. And the problem is a lot of people don't put the time in. They quit too early. I, I, I think the big thing is, um, you've got, I, I agree in some ways, and I'll go slightly different. You just have to reverse engineer what, you, you got to deploy as much self-awareness as you have in this moment and de- reverse engineer what you want. If D-Rock wants, for example, if D-Rock wants to make a movie, for real, right, a feature film, he's never been in a better position with me because if, if, as long as he keeps believing in me and as long as yeah. I keep proving that I continue to grow, I'm closer to being able to fund a feature, I can fund a feature film now. Sure. Like it's raising money, like I don't want to, no way D-Rock, but <laughs> you know, I, I think, I think but start. you just have to know what, what you want. I think, I think that my career advice, Manu, to you, to D-Rock, to India, to uh, Tyler, to Andy, to Jason, to myself is know what you want and put yourself in the best position to succeed to get there but be careful because the thing right in front of you is normally not the thing that's actually gonna get you to the best position to actually do what you want. Mm. There you go. 
India. But you're in the game. That's important. You're in yes. A crazy video. Crazy uh, video. A minute Gary, 44. Gary, Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk! Hey, you remember when episode three, you said it should be your life dream to get your question on my show? Gary, it's my life dream, man. Please, India, come on, girl. Get me on the show. Just kidding, India, you're awesome, I love you. Hey, I'm really glad you didn't get fired. <laughs> we were worried, we were worried. Vayner Nation was worried. Hey, d Rock, can our cameras get together and Focus. <laughs> I'm Zeke Fifreak, coming from you from Valparaiso, Indiana. Cornfields and everything. Oh, God help me. I need a mountain. Somebody get me a mountain. I'm a personal trainer and a lifestyle manager. Ooh, that's a new one. Lifestyle manager. Ooh, what does that even mean? Well, I'll tell you, but I don't, let's, let's just get to the question, okay? No, but really, I love what you're saying about self-awareness. It's one of the number one things I talk to my clients about. One of the number of things that has changed my life for the better in so many different ways. But being truly self-aware, I know that one of my best talents, obviously, <laughs> is the energy that I bring to the table. And I'm telling you, I'll bring this energy to the table wherever I'm at, okay? Call me out there right now. I'm going to drive out there. You think I won't? I will bring this energy, Gary. And I know this would be really great for brands, but I'm trying to brand my own thing on the side, right? So the question is, how do you harness an, an emotion that comes through the energy that I develop and give and share with other people. How can I monetize that online? Um, I've been working on it and I could really use your help. Thank you so much, Gary. I love you, man. Hey, DRock, link in the description. Ooh, get right there, right there. Lift life, guys. And go New York Jets! Woo! Jason, what are you doing with that? <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's like Jim Carrey. <laughs> He's like... really, really, that's really got some interesting charisma. What do you think? Uh, How does he monetize all that energy? Well, here's the thing. We, we both know online is a great way to get attention. It's, it's a little bit challenging sometimes to monetize. Obviously, the CPMs are very low. It's hard to get to the brands. That's why big agencies like yours exist and other ones around town. They have the brand relationships. So there'll be some opportunity to join these networks of stars. You know about those. Yep. Um, and that's a fine way to do it. But I think building your brand online and then increasing your prices offline. So if he's a trainer and he's got five clients and they're all paying 50 bucks an hour, what I always find is people are afraid to raise their prices and lose clients, right? So if he keeps growing and he's that good, you know, he should be able to raise his, double his price, then double your price, then double your price. And you know, maybe have five people who are paying $400 a session or that kind of a thing. So be good at whatever your skill is and then keep raising your price. Products, services, content. Yeah. There's only four to five things that one can do sure. to monetize. Yeah. You've got great energy, you get intention, you, get, you, get, you build a base, and then you can do a lot of different things. You could sell them stuff, sure. right? Make a product, create, yeah. you can sell a t-shirt, like you can sell them a physical thing. Yeah. You can create a service. If you train people and it's 50 bucks an hour, then it's 100, then it's 200. Yeah. You can be in a place where you as a personality gets monetized. You sign a book deal, you sell a sure. lot of them. You speak for 100 bucks, then 1,000 bucks, then 5,000 bucks. Uh, you create a scalable content play. You put out something that is, you know, you put your classes on Udemy and all these kind of things, yeah. collect, co co creative collective and things like that. So. You and I can give you like a lot of things, but like the truth is, there's only like five or six things it's that are out the there. It's a rookie mistake when I talk to somebody and say, "What's your business model?" And they say, "Well, it's going to be advertising, mm -hmm. and subscriptions, and then we're going to sell things, and then we're going to sell the data." And they list 18 things, and it's like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa!" The great companies, Uber, take a percentage. Tumblr, advertising, Google, ad network, right? It's very rare that you see even a big company, Apple, selling hardware goes into a second or third business line. You have to pick one and Go master deep. it. And just master it because you know how hard it is to get advertising and content to work. You have to be the number one person in your category and you have to have very tight relationships and you have to deliver for those advertisers. On a product basis, people who are making great products and selling them at a high profit like Apple, man, it's hard to compete against people like that. You have to be exceptional in this the, day and age. The other thing for a lot of you that are watching that I think will be valuable is try to do everything. Give a free speech. Create a content ebook. Sure. Go try to get a publishing deal. Like, try different things. And see which ones work. Yeah, see and what, which like, one you enjoy. Yeah, I think that's so. critical too. Because yeah. if you don't enjoy being in a service business and having customers, like, you can't do it because you're gonna hate. Oh your my customers. god! All my tech friends, as you like yeah. know, like, like from what I came from, they're like, you like this? Like, you like having them? Like. <sighs> I'm like, Brutal. I like it because I know what it's building for me long term. Yeah. But it's, you know, like nobody in tech wants the unscalable nature of, of this. Of a service business. 
Nobody. No. Nobody. But if you look at it, you have real clients. And look at the knowledge you're getting. Like you have all these millennials out here, and like <laughs> they they're different, aren't they? I don't they're think. Different. So. I they swear to God, I don't think. Gen Xers. I, you know what, I think that's a popular conversation. I think people are pretty basic. Do they, yeah. like, yeah, I think that they have the same tried and true things, which is they have some balance of their wants and needs. Mm. I just think that they have more power. They do. They have more power because the world has gone in their favor. They're 20 something in a time where 20 somethings are respected by 40, 50, and 60 somethings around business because business is being done here. And they, they know it. Do you, do you get the sense when they're looking at you that they're like, I can be him and I can do what he does. I hope not because then they're fucking stupid. Yeah, I think they're looking, I think I'm looking around the room, I think a lot of them are like, I could be in charge. You know what's funny? I hope they feel that way, but they, it won't happen. <laughs> it takes time. All right, India, let's go. <laughs> what's up, Gary and team? How do Yusuf here? Off of your inspiration, I started vlogging my startup journey. I've been interacting with online communities like the Great Vayner Nation, and just making sure that I'm putting out good content. But aside from patience and thinking about the long game, what are some things that someone like me should be doing to grow his audience? Thanks a lot. So I think one thing that stands out for me and then you'll jump in Jason is, I think more real life stuff, like every meetup. Sure. Like, like Jason, you might remember this, when I first got, I mean it's really fun to get your perspective on this, when I first came into the ecosystem, yeah. I was pouring wine at a Jaiku Leo Laporte meetup. Yeah. You're I was the wine guy. Yeah, I mean, I was. We're like, I was that guy. I was the service. I was the help. Basically, I mean, I didn't want to say it, but it's kind of true. And so, and so, like, you, like, we need wine here. And, me, and meanwhile, yeah, and meanwhile, I had the biggest business in the room. For Everybody sure. else had business on paper. Yeah. I actually had a business, but I was willing to earn my keep into the ecosystem. That's the advice I would give here, which is. If you're documenting your journey, amazing, but go to every, I mean, Israel's such a hotbed for tech startups and just startups in general. Go to every meetup, meet every person, be part of the ecosystem. I think you did that extremely well. That's right. I, when I started Silicon Alley Reporter here, I wore a Silicon Alley Reporter shirt every day. I had 20 of them, so I was the brand, and I would show up at every party, and I'd have copies of the magazine. You have to be the brand, and you have to be everywhere, but a little hack for him might be, um, be the most intelligent question under the most important people's blog posts or their tweets. In other words, really take your time. Forget about building your own content and your own audience. Find somebody who's got an audience that you would like to acquire and be the most intelligent person in their Love ecosystem that. for a while. Which is kind of what you did. Like, you meet the guy, you're like, oh, this guy's passionate about wine, but I'm here to see Leo, but this guy's also kind of interesting too, right? And so if you can put yourself in Fred Wilson's comments on AVC. It's like, who are these people? You know what's a really, this, is, this is really smart, especially in the Facebook ecosystem where if it's actually that, it populates up. Yeah, they trend it up. The best comment goes up. But this takes time and you have to not be thinking about yourself with your comment. That's the problem. I think people are trying to build a brand so they think it's They're pitching them. instead yeah. of bringing value to the community of the micro community within that blog post. Correct. Yep. What is the topic we're talking yep. about? And how do you say something highly intelligent and, and, to your, and further and, the conversation? And to you, because you don't come from 20 years of experience, 30 years of experience, you need to put your lens on it. By the way, there's a lot more people reading comments on those blogs that are just like you, entrepreneurs that are trying to make it, yeah. than us reading it. Where and so, so you saying, here's my perspective from an Israeli-led startup that from a 23-year-old's perspective, yeah. you'll get a lot of juice from that. You need to own it. There's way too many true people trying to fake the funk right now mm. that they're so genius business people and they have no experience under their fingernails. There's nothing more, like I think, appealing than somebody who's a young entrepreneur saying, I really don't understand how this works. Can somebody explain it to me or help me because I really would like to be successful. People will come out and help you. 100%. I find if you deploy the humility and don't fake it. Yeah, there's no reason to fake it. Like go on to Well, everybody and does that. And by the way, I've been there. Like like when you don't when you're not there yet, you kind of want to you want to I used to say yes and this and it was just not smart. I should have said please tell me and this and that. I would have got there faster. In my meetings, anytime a word comes up that I don't know, I said, what does that mean? In a business meeting? I, and I wouldn't even have meetings then because I'm terrible at like vocab. Yeah, but when you have and a like, pitch and then somebody's <laughs> like, oh, do you know about this? And I'm like, what is that? And I just say, explain to me what that is. And they're like, oh, it's an acronym for this. And now I'm like, okay, now I'm getting smarter. Yeah, 100%. Right. Andy, let's move this. I know we got a, I got a call. Last, last one. Last call. David. Whoa. David's in a suit. Hey, this is David Villa in Tampa, Florida. I'm the CEO of IPD. And hey, Gary, I got a question for you. How do you deal with the sacred cow or the top performer in your business that generates a ton of business, but it's toxic to your company culture? Fired. We service dealerships all the time. Fired. Fired, David. 
fired David. But let me, does he have anything else? Yeah. Top producer. Top, fired. Yeah. Even before he finished, right? Good, good guess. Fired. 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 Yeah. Fired. It's fired. Life is short. It's not even about like living your best life and life is short. It's you lose. Like you yeah. lose. Like you're just gonna cap out. It's like it's like math-based marketing. Eventually, you run out of time, and like you can only extract so much. You know what? It's like. You know, you have someone like J.R. Smith on your team, and like he's eventually going to implode and cost you a championship. Well, right? Like, you gotta but be careful with some of that talent. No, no. J.R. Smith, J.R. Smith as the number one on that team. Yeah. When the top performer is toxic, you are finished. It's game over, yeah. The other thing, by the way, is out. you have to be the most, you have to be the top performer. Like, like to me, that is the number one thing that I've always loved about my businesses, which is like, I don't know, I just don't rely on anybody. Else. Like, I could never imagine running a business that I would sit there and say, if D Rock quits, he's scared. Tomorrow, he's scared of that guy quitting because he's the top salesman. A hundred percent. That's what I can see the fear in his eyes. Because if he wasn't, he'd be like, well, I'll just do the sales. You I'll wouldn't even ask that question. Yeah. Like, there's a by the way, in a car salesman world, there's a billion great car salesmen. By the way, in the comment section, if you're a tremendous car salesman and up for moving, leave a comment. All right, Jace, you get to ask the question of the day. Any question you want, great focus group of hundreds, if not thousands of uh, answers inside of Facebook and YouTube. What's on your mind to young entrepreneurs and business peeps and social media peeps? What are you curious about these days? What are you looking at? As you're, you've been a very successful investor. You've been absolutely historically co- correct on trends. Even the people that love to razz you and things like that, and they yeah. cannot deny the fact that you've seen things play out properly with your I business behavior. I put numbers behavior. on the board, thank put you, Put numbers, you put numbers on the board. As people that have put themselves out there, and yeah. you get your pros and your cons of sure. that, like nothing trumps the resume. Having no. wins helps. Well, it's air cover. Is, as I tell people, you know, when they criticize me, whatever, I'm like, <laughs> I'm just a guy who got lucky eight times. Right, I just know, eight. Like, just eight times. But yeah. you know, like at a certain point, if you just keep hustling and you have one of those wins every and is that, years. By the way, is that number really three or four and you've made like, like is it really, like I'm, I'm actually genuine. you don't I'm know genu- about. Like so for example, Please. I'm an LP in a fund. Yes. That fund. Saka. I can't say which one it was, not Saka. But it was in that stock certificate up there. <laughs> got it. And yep. it was in WhatsApp. Yep. And I just got a call one day and they're like, by the way, you have these two huge wins. And I was like, I didn't know I had those wins, but somebody made I those investments it. on my app. Right? I get so those it. things happen. I just sold my book and I'm doing a book on angel investing and Hollis. Good luck. Hollis, I know. Harper is I, doing it. Just so you know, little, little, not only that, but little behind the scenes, I get calls from Hollis once in a while, like, what's the story here? Name check. And usually I'm like, and this, and I'm like, on this one. No, no, she was like, Gary went to bat for you. I was like, oh, very nice. I, and you guys know I hate to go to bat. For sure. No, so India, I, I don't go to bat. I know. So, okay, so my question for everybody is, um, <laughs> what do you think the future is of employment now that we have robotics and AI, and what are your solutions if, in fact, we see a lot of jobs go away? How would you solve the problem of a society with, let's say, 20% less jobs available, which would increase unemployment, which, you know, we say the number's three or four percent right now, but it really doesn't include people who gave up, which is another 15 percent. So what if we lived in a, in a world where the majority of people couldn't find a job and only half the people were employed? How would you try to solve for that in a creative way? Because in our industry, we debate this, but we all, and in the past, we've always come up with new jobs, but it feels like this could be the different time. Joe Biden, I was at an event where Joe Biden spoke, I don't, I, and the reason I'm, say, I'm name dropping is because Maybe maybe because he's got a quote out there that can, somebody can make this completely tight because I could be wrong. I don't remember if he said it's the number one job in America or the number one job, now I'm recalling, for people that do not have a college degree. Hmm. But whatever the punchline is, and again, somebody leave a comment for clarification. He said the number one job in the marketplace for, is transportation drivers. Right. And he goes, with this looming, this is the number one job people have, sure. and I believe Truck actually, drivers, right? Cab drivers, cap, that's delivery, right. Everything. You know, yeah. I mean, listen. And by the way, that's what happens in industrial revolutions. Yep. Like shit's about to hit the fan. And what is the solution for our society? Yeah. That's just an open question. No, it's a big question. It's a big question. Gary, Congrats. When's on. the book coming out? It's gonna come out next summer. All right. Yeah. Well, I let mean, me know it's when. Lean on you for a tweet here or there. Or yeah. Something. We'll have you ask a question, and we'll link it up. Oh, we'll all right. Good, good. All I right. need a little uh, some because you got all these kids here like working on this stuff. I mean, you're blown away. You were. Fundamentally blown away by the youth of this organization. I've never, like, I have never seen an organization this young. I'm looking around the room. 
That kid's definitely in high school. <laughs> this, this kid's Tyler, 20, how old 22? are you, Tyler? 25. Bang. 19. 19. I said he's in high school. 22. Ty, hold on, hold on. Okay. This kid's 21. 23. Yep. That kid's 25. <laughs> 28. Yeah, Andy looking she's good. She's 26. She I, told I, I you. I knew that already. She told me. This kid's like 22. How old are you? I'm, gonna, I'm 45. Nice number. This is how old you, man we just looked since I've been here. Put it this way, you and I Did you hear are that? as old as the two people here. No, I get it. I know. You keep asking questions, we'll keep answering them.